Hi, everybody. It's Tyler here at Championships. Check in. Legendary 1678 Citrus Circus. Three incredible wins this year and an impact award as well, too. Citrus Circus has always been the complete package from everything they do, of course, here with the robot, to the service center, so much more they're doing to impact the community as well, too. And the robot is absolutely phenomenal. Once again, it's always a pleasure to take a look at the cool different creative designs and the software that goes into this. So keep an eye out as we go through that coral journey, talk about some of the LG as well and some great software attributes that you're going to really want to pay attention to. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash FIRST to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or a $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com slash contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free. Scan the QR code or go to altair.com slash contest for further details. Okay, let's start to work through this robot here, talking about the uh, intake system you developed and the indexing and how all this starts to go through. Absolutely. So over here on our intake, we, we at Citrus love a couple things. We love a super wide area to grab with, and we love rolly grabbers. So we combine both of those things into our intake. Um, we can grab from basically anywhere, and that just gives our, our driver a lot more room of air, a lot more places to work with. Uh, we also love to do four bar intakes here. So this intake is really nice because if we get a hit from the front, the whole intake can collapse up and into the robot instead of collapsing in on itself like you see with some of these slap down intakes at this event. Uh, this intake's gone through a lot of iteration over this. We started with a completely different design. We pivoted halfway through the year after our first competition. Uh, the big thing we were able to add with this new design, there's a lot more space to work with, so we were able to add this ramp and these flanges right here. These allow us to already start our indexing journey at the very front of the coral intake, and it allows us our indexer back here to be way smaller. At our first competition this year, our indexer was basically from all the way here all the way over to here. And as you might imagine, that made there a lot of room in the middle of this where coral could just kind of end up and it would bounce around. There's a little bit of a dead spot that by doing this ramp and by making this whole thing, this whole indexer one cohesive unit, we were able to much, we were able to kill that dead spot and it's all a lot more fluid. And uh, we've gone down into all the way down here at the very end of the indexer. You can see where we grab a piece of coral and um, we will show that now. Real quick. Yeah. So at, you know, looking from this rebuild that you did here and going in, is there anything else that when you went from your last event into Champs, did you make any more changes or is there anything else you maybe would change in retrospect? Um, in retrospect, I would make this a lot more serviceable. Um, it's a bit of an issue with any four bar intake just because of how complex the mechanism is. But any single change on here takes like 30 to 45 minutes to actually be able to do, uh, which really sucks in like a high stress event where you have to make your changes fast. But I'm pretty happy with how this intake turned out overall. And uh, the main thing we changed from our last event was we made this carbon fiber way thicker. At uh, Contra Costa, which was our week five event, we were running half inch carbon fiber instead of one inch carbon fiber. And by the end of the event, this middle piece of carbon fiber literally bent in half and cracked down the middle. So that was our big change for this event. Fair enough with that. Let's pass over to Emma, talk more about the uh, elevator system uh, they had in the end effector as well. And of course, anything else you might want to cover on this awesome machine. Yeah, so uh, for the elevator, we really wanted to focus on speed and weight and CG. So um, our elevator is a two-stage continuous elevator powered by string. And um, everything is two by one tubes. And our carriage is just a simple two, time, two by two tube. So um, because we really want to care about uh, weight, if our, you can see, take a look at our carriage, that everything is mounted below like the uh, below the top half of the carriage. So including our gearbox and our motor. So uh, what's really nice about this gearbox is that it's actually on a whole slot. So especially since we're running a belt, which makes it easy to skip at times, uh, we can easily tension the gearbox by turning that uh, West Coast Products cam. Um, moving on to our end effector, um, we just made it incredibly lightweight using only like polycarb, um, the max composite, and three printed materials. So you can see that one motor powers both sides of the end effector. You have the coral side over here, and then you have the algae side on this side. 
So um, another thing that we found with the elevator, just because of our architecture, that we had to keep uh, fairly narrow, which leads to a lot of uh, wobbling around, especially when you reach into the L4 or the net scoring. So we've added this strut here with two opposite threaded O-rings to tighten or loosen. And then we also uh, shifted the top plates diameters. At the very top, there's uh, bolts that mount into the two blocks. We shifted the diameters inwards by 20 thou just to make sure that we're uh, reducing the amount of gap between the elevator uh, tubes and to actually pinch down on the tubes to prevent any wiggle at the very top of the uh, scoring. Such a smooth process. It's so fun to watch this robot on the field compete and gain the quick cycles that you do uh, for that as well, too. Uh, Jack, let's talk about the uh, LG uh, intake and the uh, climber on this robot as well, too. Uh, Climber-wise, I'd love to hear, too, like if, if you went through any iterations on your climber itself, it would be great to hear about. Yeah, so we started the event um, starting week one. We really didn't use the LG intake much um, because we were spending most of the time filling up the reef. Uh, but it really came into play by week five when we were filling up that reef um, and the last thing we could do was take the ground allergy off the ground, put it up in the net, was a valuable um, strategic mechanism. Um, mechanical wise, um, it's just two simple plates on a gearbox. Um, these are a composite material so it's super flexy um, and can take big hits while still running and intaking algae. Um, so that's been a great help for us so far. And for the climber, this is our second main version of it. Um, started off, it took around 20 seconds week for our week one and three events. Um, really slowed us down in the end game. Took a while to line up our climb. Now though, we're using these big wings, directing the cage into the wheels, spinning here and latching in with these mechanisms. So really once we grab on, it's locked in. We're gonna hold on until the end of the match. Um, and it's really sped up our climb now to the past uh, about 10 seconds at the end of the match. So that's able to add us a couple more cycles in the end game and get us a few extra points towards the end of the match. So here at Championships, you know, how have you seen the meta evolve from when you were at Contra Costa into the championship event? How has that gameplay evolved for Citrus or even for what you've seen so far against your opponents? Yeah, I think um, at this very start of the competitions, we've been more going for L4 and working our way down. Um, now that we're with such competitive teams um, and we've improved ourselves that we start with L4 and we're confident we can fill it up. So we start L4, um, segment it up, and then within our alliance, we work our way down, all the way down to L2, and we can trust that we'll still have that full reef. Um, and then throughout the match, if any algae gets in our way, we're able to clean that up, put it in the net, um, and really just uh, getting into the smooth flow of, flow of the game um, and just making it flow smoothly, yeah. Michal, let's talk about some software aspects uh, on this robot here. Lots of great stuff to go through uh, for this. I know we're going to set the robot down on the floor here, but I mean, once again, I think Citrus and just all the great different automation, the lineups, everything that goes into what your team does, walk me through some of it. Yeah, so first thing, um, you can see our whole dashboard here as well as our limelight streams up on a separate camera. We use all of that to verify our robot is completely ready to run and stuff while disabled. Um, for our limelights, we have two. Um, sorry, I'll point out the limelights really quick. We have one up here, which we use for a mix of detection and pose estimation. In auto, this is the limelight that we use for our coral detection and detecting the game pieces. We use it to estimate all the poses of the coral so that we can just PID to pose to all of them. One cool thing we do in our autos is that depending on the auto, we zone out different part, different areas on the field that marks, sorry, that detections are allowed to be on, which means that we're avoiding the marks and stuff, which allows us to be compatible with our partners a lot of the time. And we have a second limelight, which is harder to see, but it's all the way down here. And this is our main one we use for all of our April, our reef scoring. And what that means is that we're just, as we're driving around, not all the time it's able to see, but when it's able to see, it's in a great spot to see like at any point of the reef and it's able to score on uh, both branches. Um, I'm gonna get more into our LED feedback, but this is specifically us making sure that everything on our robot is ready while disabled. On our pivot here, super cool. We have um, one LED strip that's telling us what direction we need 
to move the pivot in to be at the correct spot for our auto start. And it's, so as you see, I move it up. It gets closer and closer to the color until I'm at the right spot. And that means that the pivot's in the right spot. And we use a similar thing for vision, this strip here. And once all of those are solid green, that tells us we're ready for the match. And if anything is awry, these LEDs immediately tell us, and it's really easy for us to figure out what we need to check. And it's what allows us to be so consistent in our matches. Well, why don't you uh, walk us through some different uh, systems demos and yeah. take a look at what those are. We're gonna start by re-zeroing really quick. And Mihal, can you walk us through what's happening during this too? So we're gonna do go through one of our systems checks really quick. We're gonna start with an L4 followed by an L3, L2, and L1, and we'll just go down the reef. And while we're doing that, you'll notice our LEDs are updating with like blinks, um, depending on the side of the re of the branch. Sorry, the side the fate. Sorry, uh, depending on the side of the face we're scoring on, our LEDs auto update in color, which lets our driver know which branch is the closest one that's being targeted, which allows us to go uh, figure out exactly where we're targeting and just clean up our cycles without adding a ton of complexity. Uh, now we're gonna do an algae pull off the reef. All of this, the coral scores and the algae pulls are auto aligns. So our driver just presses a single button and everything happens. Now we're gonna go into our uh, nuts score. And just with all of these modes, you can see our LEDs are constantly changing, which allows us to figure out exactly what mode we're in, and it allows our driver to not have to be looking down at the laptop to figure out exactly what's happening with the robot. Mayhall and team, this has been a phenomenal overview of what a great robot that you have here. First off, thank you to Citrus for all the awesome contributions that you make to the FRC community and beyond as well too. And of course, the inspiration that the robot brings. A really complete package of a team. We can't wait to see how you do here at Worlds, both on the uh, impact and also on the robot side as well too. Good luck the rest of the way. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. Earn up to a $5,000 sponsorship for your team or $2,000 individual prize when you provide a video submission to the Altair Global Student Contest at altair.com contest. You can build better robots faster with Altair tools and provide multiple video submissions for the contest. Download Altair tools for free, scan the QR code, or go to altair.com contest for further details. Build your alliance with so many other FIRST alumni who go to Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu first to learn more about their incredible programs and to get more information.